So are you about to PCS? And is it kind of stressing you out and you don't know where to start? Don't worry, boo. I got you. It's you running through my veins. Your love runs through my veins. What's up, family? If you are returning, welcome back. How you been? It's good to see you. And if you are new, hello. I am Andrea, and it is so very nice to meet you. On this channel, I talk about my journey trying to navigate my roles as wife and mother to two very crazy yet wonderful boys, as well as being an entrepreneur. So if that sounds like something that interests you and you want to see, please do me the biggest favor and hit that subscribe button right over here and then hit the bell right next to it. That way you will be notified every time I post a video. But okay, as you can see from the title, in this video I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks and basically information that I wish I would have known before our first PCS. Let's get right into it. Now, there are two different ways that you can move with the military. You can either do a Diddy move, which is basically like a DIY move where you get the movers, you get the truck, you move your stuff yourself and pay for it yourself and then have the military just reimburse you. Or you can have it to where the military does everything and you're just kind of hands off in the process. The military will send the movers, the military will send the people to pack up your belongings. They will transport everything and basically they'll just bring it to you at your new house. Now, if you can do a Diddy move, hats off to you. You are wonderful. But the way my anxiety is set up, I can't do it. But either way, whether you're doing a Diddy move or you're having the military move all of your stuff, the best thing that you can do is go through everything that you own and figure out what it is that you need and the things that you don't need. So go through your closet, go through your cabinets and everything that you haven't used or you haven't worn in a long amount of time, give it away. Like there is no need to take things that you don't use along with you from place to place to place. That's like quarter 101, don't do that. Because nine times out of 10, you don't know where you're gonna be living. You don't know what the size of your new place is gonna be. So why come with like a four bedroom house worth of stuff when all you're gonna be getting is a two bedroom apartment? You get it? Like it's kind of, you're gonna be confined and really claustrophobic. Just don't even do it. Limit what you take. Also, by going through your belongings and taking only what you need, this gives you the opportunity to organize your move from the very beginning. So you can go through, say, your office and go through all of your things that you have in your office. You've already taken out what you don't need. So now you can start to organize your belongings that you're keeping into piles so that when the movers come to pack up your things, you can say everything on that desk can go into one box. All of these books I'm taking with me, they can go into one box. That way when it's time to unpack, everything is already organized for you and you can just unpack everything and put it exactly where it belongs with all the like things that are supposed to go to it. Okay, so when I say that, it's sort of a two-fold situation because for one, if you're coming from a warmer climate to a colder climate, you don't want to pack a whole bunch of tank tops and shorts and flip flops and then when you get to your new duty station be freezing because it's 30 degrees and you've packed like it's an 80 degree day. That's just not going to be helpful at all and then you're going to have to buy more clothes and maybe spend the money that you didn't want to spend. So pack with your destination in mind in that aspect. And then on the other hand of packing with your destination in mind. If you're having the movers move you, you do not have the majority of your belongings. So you are gonna to need to pack pretty much everything that you're gonna to need to start you off when you first get to your new duty station. 
So I mean pack your hair accessories, brushes, combs, hair ties, gel, hairspray, whatever it is you use, pack it. In addition to your hair care products and your skincare products, think about things like making sure you pack enough underwear to last you until the military comes with the rest of your belongings. Making sure you've packed enough, at least enough pants and different tops so that you don't have to keep running back and forth to the laundromat to wash your clothes while you wait for the rest of your belongings to come. So my family, we have a bunch of health issues. I have multiple sclerosis. Both of my sons have asthma. My oldest son also has a whole host of food allergies that require EpiPens in addition to asthma. So all of those things, I try to refill all of our prescriptions prior to leaving from one place and heading to another. Because you know there's always that delay in waiting to meet your new doctors and establish care with them and having to take them through your whole health history and everything and then them filling out prescriptions like it's a whole headache and it just alleviates so much stress if you already have the medications that you need on hand while you wait for them to handle all of your medications and get to know you and order things just it completely avoids any delay in medication now this binder is crucial it is going to basically contain your entire life it needs to have a copy of your military spouse's orders and several copies at that because you're going to be giving them to multiple people as well as everyone's birth certificates and social security cards and if you have children their school records if you have this binder you don't have to worry about waiting for all of your belongings to come with the movers and delaying the process of getting your ID if you need to get it, renewing your ID if you need to renew it, um, setting up your housing, all of that, you have everything with you that you need to get your life started at your new duty station. Moving is already stressful and unpacking is even more stressful. So if you go to the Dollar Tree, grab yourself several rolls of different colored duct tape. And as the movers are packing up your belongings, you can go behind them and tear off a piece of duct tape and put it on each box to categorize what box contains what room's belongings. So for example, if you're in your bedroom and they've packed up all of your belongings that belong in your master bedroom, you can take a yellow roll of duct tape, tear off a piece, put it on all those boxes, and that lets you know every box that has yellow duct tape on it is the master bedroom. Go to the kitchen, use blue duct tape. So you know that when you get to your new residence and the movers unpack all your boxes, you know this blue box belongs in the kitchen. So this just makes it easier so that when it's time to unpack, you're just not surprised opening boxes. So you go, you're in your bathroom and then all of a sudden you have a box full of kitchen supplies. It just makes life so much easier, so organized. Go to Dollar Tree, get you some duct tape, and also you can write yourself a little key. So take a piece of paper and write what each room in your house is, and then take a swatch of the duct tape and put it next to its corresponding room. So yellow is the master bedroom, blue is kitchen, so forth and so on, and put that in your important documents binder to carry around with you that way. When the movers come, you can just take that piece of paper, your little key, out of the binder and put it up in an area where everyone can see it. So as the movers bring in boxes, you know, okay, this box goes here, that box goes there. Make your life so simple. Almost every, not even almost, probably all military bases have a spouse's Facebook page. So you can go and search, say you're going to Fort Carson, like we're about to. You can go in the search bar, type in Fort Carson spouses or Fort Carson wives page, and it will show up. You go on there, it'll probably ask you like one or two questions just to verify that you are actually a military spouse who is coming to Fort Carson. 
and bam, you're joined. And then you can ask questions. If you plan to live off post, you can ask what are the best neighborhoods? You can ask what are the best schools? It basically allows you to get a lay of the land without even getting there yet. So that way you're not completely lost and behind when you get to your new place. That is all that I have for you guys. Please, if there's anything that I miss, anything that's helped you, please leave down in the comment box below to help somebody else. Oh, and please make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, now I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.